This is the Inventory Pro Item Master List screen. And the first screen of the Item Master List is information about the items, whether you choose to categorize your items, track units of measure. Uh, it shows the cost and the price. These fields are for the reorder points, where you can set a max and min level. And you can have the system either automatically generate purchase orders, or you can run your reorder report to see the, the reorder levels. The next tab is the Stocking Properties tab. And this tells the system how to use this item, whether or not the item uses a serial number, if the system should check if it's going to be a unique serial number, if the item uses an expiration date, etc. I'm going to jump to the Documents tab. And this allows you to store or associate a file along with your items. Uh, whether you're going to store a picture or a PDF file, a Word document, you can associate those files with each item. The More Details tab and the Custom Accounts tab both have hidden fields where you can turn these on and customize the labels. Uh, if I click the, uh, the link here, it, it shows the fields that were hidden. On the Custom Accounts tab are 10 hidden drop-down boxes, and the More Details tab has, has many more. And to customize a label in Inventory Pro, what you do is right-click on the field and choose Customize Field, then enter your custom label. Now the next time you open the Item Master List screen, that field's going to be turned on and have your custom label, and you're going to be able to enter text into that field. To create a new item, you click the green New button, and you can type in your new part. and fill it in that way. Alternatively, if you have an item that's already set up similarly to the new item, or you already have the category selected and, and, and the item's going to be very similar to the new one, you can use the Copy button. And what that's going to do is copy the current item into a new one and allow you to enter a new item ID. So now the new one's been created, and you can see it has all the attributes of the item that I had copied originally. Items can also be assemblies where you, you build the item on a work order. And the list of components is under the Components button. And for this, in the system, to make this item, there's this list of components that go in to make that item. And that, and that allows you to do that on the work orders where you can issue out all the subcomponents and receive in or create your parent item. These numbers here represent what's actually in the system. The in stock value is the number that are in the system currently. On hold would be items that have been checked off to be on hold. I can look at any of my items and mark it on hold. And now it's no longer available to issue out. So you can see now, here's the one that I just put on hold. Committed quantities mean items that are on shipping orders or work orders that are committed to issue out of the system. And if I click on the magnifying glass, it's going to give me a list of my work orders and shipping orders that, where, the, where this item appears. On order is the amount on order on purchase orders or warehouse appointments. If I click on the magnifying glass, I can see my list of purchase orders. And actually, here's a work order where it appears. Uh, the work orders allow you to either use stock or create a purchase order for what's needed for the work order. And packed is a special system option where you can pack shipping orders before you issue them out. And in this case, there are four units packed. 